I'm Paul Merrick, and I'm an entomologist at the University of Arizona. And last night, Garrett Hughes and I were leading a walk to look for fluorescent and bioluminescent arthropods. How does that work? What does that mean? So fluorescence is where you have an emission of radiation, or an emission of light, and it strikes a substance, and then is re-emitted at, at a different wavelength. So in this case, we use black lights with a wavelength of 395 nanometers. And this light goes into the scorpion, this fluorescent organism, and then is re-emitted as, as light at a different wavelength. In this case, it's green light at about 500 nanometers. Right, yeah, so scorpions are fluorescent, and we know what, what the biochemical makeup that makes this fluorescent, fluorescence is. So it's this nitrogenous substance in their cuticle, so uh, arthropods have uh, really thick plated cuticle out the, out, on the outsides of their bodies. And in scorpions, this cuticle is formed of these nitrogenous substances. And it's these nitrogenous substances that produce this fluorescence. And entomologists don't really have an idea what the reason is behind this fluorescence. So there's different ideas for this fluorescence, but these different hypotheses have been put forth, but none of them have been tested yet, so we're not sure what it does for the scorpion as far as its, its fitness. And in the meantime, it's a really useful tool to find scorpions in the dark. Right, right. So, so it's a really, really easy thing to do. You just go out in the, in the nighttime in the Sonoran Desert with one of these uh, UV lights. And it's really neat, these scorpions just light up and glow like a little little star field on the ground. So you were looking for a lot of scorpion species, are there many species here? Yeah, there, there are a few species, so there's a good diversity of scorpions in the Sonoran Desert in southern Arizona. So the most common ones that we found were the Arizona bark scorpion, so Ceneroides sculpturatus. Another species was the striped scorpion, which is Vajovis spinigerus. And also common in that area is the Arizona hairy scorpion, or Hedrurus arizonensis. The most common ones we found are was the uh, Arizona bark scorpion that kind of crawl up walls and the sides of the canyons. And we also found the striped scorpion, which are mostly on, on the ground. So uh, the most common ones were the bark scorpion, which is actually the scorpion that um, causes the most number of uh, medical problems as far as uh, bites or stings in Arizona, um, and the striped scorpion. Does it cause the most problems because it's more common and so humans encounter them more, or is it because they are particularly venomous or whatever they're... They yeah, they're, they're particularly venomous. Mm -hmm. So the, the venom in these scorpions is really potent for the size of the scorpion that it is. So these little bark scorpions are probably about, about that big and they really pack a wallet, so a lot of venom um, per ounce scorpion. And um, they're pretty common too, so folks in Tucson and, and southern Arizona and, and Arizona really come across bark scorpions pretty frequently in their house and in, in their walls around uh, their domiciles. So in your nocturnal search for scorpions, did you pretty much find what you would have expected to find in, a, in Saguaro National Park? We found a lot of what we expected to find, but we also saw some surprises also. So we found, um, in addition to these scorpions, we found some nice black widows. And what's interesting about these black widows is that, and I didn't know this before, but their little spherical egg cases actually fluoresce. So in addition to the little scorpions that were fluorescing beneath us, these black widow egg cases fluoresce, which is really neat. And we also found some centipedes. So in the desert, in the Sonoran Desert, we have these really nice big uh, desert centipedes. One of them is Scolopendra heros. And the really common one is Scolopendra polymorpha, or the tiger centipede. And we saw a few of these at night, too. These are some more nocturnal organisms. Right, so there's a lot going on in the desert at night. Yeah. And what role do the scorpions play in the ecosystem? Yeah, so, so scorpions are a really essential part of the ecosystem. Scorpions are predators, so they feed on smaller arthropods like um, little cockroaches and flies and um, basically anything that's smaller than them. And 
they're an essential part of the ecosystem because they're a predator in the system. So they keep um, herbivore populations down and keep the, the cycle of the ecosystem continual. And are they prey in turn? Are they at the top of the food chain or, does, or are they eaten by other things? Yeah. Yeah, there are some organisms that prey on, on scorpions. One of the notable ones is the southern grasshopper mouse that we have here in the Sonoran Desert also. And these mice are really cool. They're known as um, um, mice or uh, wolves in my, mice clothing. Um, so they're these little uh, mice, probably about that big, and they actually bark also, which is kind of a crazy thing. And they actually feed on these scorpions. And so these these little mice are like little ninjas. They go up and they grab the scorpions and run around them, and they can quickly chew off the tail of the scorpion that has a stinger on it, and then just feast on the rest of it. And they're just so quick, they're specially adapted at eating these arthropods and quickly subduing their uh, really pointy ends. Amazing. I guess you didn't see any of those last night. It sounds no. like they would stay hidden. No, we, di we didn't see any of those. Um, but uh, the scorpions may have known about them. <laughs>